Munich. It's been an absolute disaster. 16 points they find themselves behind. A high-flying Bayer Leverkusen, so no surprise, Bayern very much the underdogs. This is what the front page of Kicker had to say. Uh, this was on Monday. And now Arsenal, anemic Bayern, flounder in the league, feeding fear of failure in the Champions League uh, too. Uh, we welcome in Mario and Frank. Derek, did I translate that right? Excellent, Dan. Very proud of you. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. <laughs> Working all day on that. Uh, Derek, things can't get much worse for Bayern, can they? Apart from maybe a thrashing over two legs at the hands of Arsenal. Yeah, you could put it that way. Thomas Tuchel has tried to put it in the following way. He has tried to say, this is not the Bundesliga. This is not the day of Bepokar. They were eliminated by third tier Saarbrücken several months ago. This is the Champions League. And if you analyse the Champions League in isolation from a Bayern point of view, it's actually been pretty impressive. Yes, they had work to do against Lazio after the first leg last time around, but they were able to turn that tie around. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, on the face of it, and I commentated on the debacle against Heidenheim at the weekend, on the face of it, it's difficult to make a case for Bayern. But I do think you have to look at the individual qualities on show. And we know that if Bayern play to their potential, they can give Arsenal a game in both matches. They can knock out Arsenal. The problem has been the formula has looked wrong and Thomas Tucher's selections have been a bit bizarre going back to the game against Leverkusen when he suddenly introduced three at the back and played players out of position and that didn't work at all. And then as a reaction to the defeat at the hands of Dortmund this past weekend in Heidenheim, he said, no, we're not going to have Matthijs de Ligt and Eric Dyer anymore in central defence. We're going to have Dario Upamecano and Min Jae Kim, who hadn't played in several weeks. So that was perhaps some sort of audition for the Arsenal game. But as auditions go, that was really calamitous. So I think he's scratching around trying to come up with the best lineup. In fairness, he had a lot of players injured at the weekend who are now back for the most part, whether they're back to be able to start, the likes of Kingsley Coman, Leroy Zane, Alexander Pavlovic, Nusser Mazraoui. We don't know. But uh, I think Bayern still can feel they can do it. However, the scale of the task is not lost on them against a very good Arsenal. Who the heck is he going to play in defence, Derek? I think it'll be back to Matthijs de Ligt and Eric Dyer, and if oh, for no goodness. reason other than the fact that that was a winning combination for a spell leading into the Dortmund game, which, as I said, didn't go to plan at all, but if you look at what happened at the weekend with the other two, and you look at the Heidenheim goals, I mean, they were essentially all a case of the defenders, specifically in the first case, Upamecano, losing runners and very direct play. And I feel a bit sorry for Upamecano because, you know, Frank will tell you, he's a, he's a quality French defender. And, you know, he's somebody who is prone to mistakes, unfortunately. But when he's playing really well, he's one of the smoothest central defenders in the world. Eric Dyer certainly wasn't signed to be first choice. Thomas Tucher does like him, and I think he trusts him more than the others and has trusted him. But whether that's the answer remains to be seen. I would also say that central midfield is a slight problem, and Tucher was right at the start of the campaign when he said, we don't have a proper holding six, to use the term that's the terminology that's come into German football so it's going to have to in all likelihood be Goretzka and Leimer and neither one really is a true defensive midfield player so that's going to be interesting for me against Jorginho and Rice. Uber Kano is in the conversation as being one of the best defenders in the world Frank at one stage he has completely and utterly fallen off a cliff. Yeah, but Derek, you know, maybe explain or alluded, you know, what, the reason why, you know, the, the, it, it happens to him and it can happen also to Kim as well. Kim has been judged one of the best centre-back last season with his former club. He signed for Bayern and he struggles like De Ligt does too, but it's true that Upi Meccano is maybe the worst of them, let's say. And, but but uh, definitely he has the talent, he has the trust of Didier Deschamps with the national team. Uh, but when you have nobody in front of them, and uh, Derek was saying that neither Leimer or nor Goreska, Goreska was able to defend properly, it's, uh, you, are, you are in danger at the back. And you know that you cannot afford to do anything bad, otherwise, otherwise you're going to consider goal. So it's maybe somewhere else that you have to check uh, um, before try, trying to, 
to, uh, to condemn uh, Upamecano or, or, or Kim. I think those players, they lost their, 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 their confidence, that's for sure. Uh, they can regain it next season, but you have to be stronger in the middle of the park. I don't understand why Kimmich, I don't know, maybe Derek can explain. Kimmich was one of the best midfielder at the time. He ended up being on the right side and he's not back in, the, he was at some point back in the middle of the park, but he's back now on the, as, a, as a right back. I don't understand what Tuchel is doing right now. You have to be strong in the middle of the park. We all know that you win battles in the middle of the park, you win games. Uh, Mario, looking at Arsenal, you could very much put a case that their worst two performances we've seen since that mini break that they were on was at home and away against Porto. Tuchel brought this up in the press conference today. How different is it and why is it different, surely, for Arsenal, who are doing so well in the Premier League, to not look quite as smooth in the Champions League? It's because it's a whole different rhythm, you know? And sometimes people have to understand that Champions League and, and the league in England is different, you know? It's, it's also the way the opponents play against you. It's, it's, it's sometimes faster, and sometimes you, you cannot hit the break the way you want it. OK, Arsenal always has the ball, so they can, you know, dictate the tempo sometimes. But there is also sometimes they face people that push them all the way to the max. When it comes, like, for example, you know, like when they, they, they play against a team that is maybe struggling in the middle of the park, you know, Leimer and Goretzka don't have that. They do have that. One thing they do have well, Arsenal, is the Gino. When he sits in front of the defence, he screens it well. Why? Because that's the way he plays also. Because he's not the, the midfielder that's going to do a lot of running. But he gives the licence to the other to, you understand, to take more risk because he will sit for them. I think Tuchel knows him well. Because, of course, you know, he was his manager for so long. But away from that, I, I think if they really want to hurt them, they have to try to get him out of position. Because if not, you know, Odegaard, and, and I think Rice is definitely one of the biggest answers. And I think this game will tell you exactly what we've been waiting for for Arsenal, right? Do they have the character and the discipline to push themselves to the next level. They brought in Rice to do that, and in the league, I think it's kind of working. Now you ask me the question, you know, against Porto, we sometimes have that little uh, uh, the question about them. Because now we have to ask them, can you take it to the next step? I still believe that they, they can against Bayern, but if they have to prolong on, then they could be uh, in trouble. But I think against Bayern, I feel like Arsenal has a, has a bigger chance in this uh, tie than Bayern will have. Uh, let's take a look then, shall we, at everybody's uh, predictions. Has anyone put their neck on the line and gone from Bayern? Derek Ray, of course! <laughs> of course, Derek! Wunderbar! Bayern to go through to the semi-finals. <laughs> Paint us the picture. You wouldn't expect anything else from me, would you, Dan? Um, I do think that Bayern will give Arsenal a game and vice versa. That could actually work for both. But I just feel that... If you look at the season as a whole, yes, it's right to say it has been a poor one for Bayern. But most of the, the bad stuff has happened in the last few weeks. And I think there still is motivation in the team when you have players like Jamal Muziala, who for me is still one of the most talented players anywhere in the world with a huge upside and his best days yet to come. He can decide a game on his own. Harry Kane, let's remember, big motivation for him coming back to London initially and then at home against Arsenal, former Spurs player. And what has happened to Bayern this season has not been Harry Kane's fault. Let's make that abundantly clear. It has not been because of Harry Kane. He has been excellent with his 32 goals in the Bundesliga and 38 in all competitions. Yes, I worry about the defensive aspects. I think that there will be holes at times. I think that will give Arsenal a chance. But I just think that with the second leg being in Munich, I, I think that does give Bayern an advantage. And I expect it to be tight, but I am going for Germany's record, Meister. And, yeah, I'm not surprised that I'm the only one. Yeah, Derek, <laughs> of course, the voice of the Bundesliga. We're familiar with his loyalty to Germany. Shank, you work on the Bundesliga as well. Where's your loyalty? Um, not, not in this version of Bayern Munich. Oh. I, and, and, listen, I, I get what Derek <laughs> is saying, and he's absolutely right. If Bayern play to, to, their, to their abilities, their their a match at the very least for, for Arsenal. But when last have we seen Bayern play anything like the, the sum of the parts should? Uh, and the, the game this weekend against Heidenheim is, is a perfect example of it. Absolutely cruising, and then all of a sudden it just comes apart, and everything about Bayern's body language on the, on, on the day just... It, it felt like a, a, a team beaten, a team beaten by a newly promoted 
Heidenheim, who just threw caution to the wind and, and they weren't able to cope. Um, listen, there, there's, just, there's just so many question marks about Bayern. And while you could, you could look at, at them getting the better of, of, of Lazio, let's remember they lost in Italy to a team sitting eighth in Syria right now. This is, is, is not a good, is not a good um, Bayern team. And this is as good an Arsenal team as, as I have seen. I think this is all about Arsenal. Where's Shaka's loyalty, Derek? You need to have a word. <laughs> I think Shaka's fair. I know Shaka very well. And I know he's, he's speaking honestly when it comes to his assessment of the game. So, so there you go. We all speak honestly. We all have our preferences. And, you know, we all think we know how it's going to go. Uh, but the truth of the matter is we don't. And I do believe that Bayern are going to surprise one or two people over the course of, of these two matches. Famous last oh, words. Oh, oh. How, how much money are you putting on this, Derek? They've surprised me all season long. <laughs> You're talking to a Scott. I mean, come on. Hey, put all, <laughs> hey, put all those FIFA millions. Stick it on there. Uh, right, Derek, thank you very much. Just a reminder, you can hear Derek at Bayer Leverkusen. I assume you're doing it the weekend, Derek? Yes, uh, both Bayern and Leverkusen at the weekend. Bayern against Köln on Saturday, and then Leverkusen, who could win the title on Sunday against Werder Bremen, both on ESPN+. Wow. Plus. Indeed. Oh, look, he did it all for me. Perfect, go. Derek. He used to do this till he got a proper job. Uh, thank <laughs> you very you much, Derek. Much appreciated. <laughs>